Elizabeth Vargas's powerful story, shining a light on alcohol abuse, a medical problem affecting more than 5 million American women. And Amy has much, much more on this. Amy? That's right, Robin. It is a deeply personal story from a member of our ABC family. 2020 anchor Elizabeth Vargas sat down with Diane Sawyer to talk about her long battle with alcoholism. Her story is now a memoir, Between Breaths, and in it she reveals some of her darkest moments and her road back to joy. Good evening. Tonight we're taking you on on television. She's the picture of calm. I'm Elizabeth Vargas in Baghdad. Traveling the world as an anchor and reporter. Let's return here to Jerusalem so you don't agree. A familiar face in the morning. <laughs> and today we're looking at jeans. But for some of those years, Elizabeth Vargas was living a secret double life as an alcoholic. Thanks, Thank you, Elizabeth, Peter. very much. There are days when you wake up and you feel so horrible that the only thing that will make you feel better is more alcohol. And that's when you're in the death spin, you know, that's when you're, that's when people die. That's when people die. How close did you come to dying? I, on one occasion, had what I know to be a lethal level of alcohol in my blood system. And um, even that didn't scare me into stopping. Can you believe it? Even that. Haunted by crushing insecurity and anxiety that began as a child, Vargas says a glass or two of wine helped smooth frayed nerves. Over the years, social drinking fueled by that anxiety became a dangerous addiction. A startling statistic, more than 60% of women who have a problem with alcohol also struggle with anxiety. Good evening, we begin tonight with two rescue. To watch Elizabeth anchor live TV, you'd have no idea she was forcing herself to suppress deep anxiety. I mean, I remember anchoring the evening news and every single night when Michelle, and I love Michelle, the floor manager, when she would count down, I hated it. Two minutes. Two minutes. And, you know, my heart would start pounding. One minute. Now I'm like hyperventilating. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. And literally the studio, the ed edges of my vision would start to swim a little. And if you watch carefully at the beginning of every newscast, World News tonight you will see me lean in and I grip the desk with my right hand. Good evening from Los Angeles. And on my left hand, which I'm holding my pen, I'm taking my engagement ring and I'm digging the edge into my thumb. Why did you go in this business if it was going to torment you like that. I loved it. I still love it. I love telling people stories. But I mean, people can look at you and say, you're so lucky, really. I am lucky. It's easy to say that on the outside looking in. And first of all, yes, I am, there's, I, you know, I am so lucky to have my two amazing children and to have this amazing job. It doesn't matter how much you have or how little you have. I, it didn't matter. It, it leveled me. It knocked me flat on my butt. I, you know, I, I lost sight of everything. Everything. And as the mother of two young boys, a punishing reality. I was drinking and sleeping. And I do vividly remember like one afternoon, Sam standing by that, my head in the bed saying, Mommy, when are you going to get up? And I remember I could smell the sunscreen and I could feel the heat from his little body because he'd just come in from the beach. And I would die for my children, Diane. I wouldn't give a nanosecond's worth of thought to die for my children, to kill for my children, but I would die for my children, but I couldn't stop drinking for my children. I don't know if I will ever forgive myself for hurting them with my drinking, ever. So vulnerable, so honest, so brave, and of course it is her children that help her continue that fight against this disease each and every day. Guys? So raw, all right. Thank you, Amy, and Dr. Richard Besser is here and gonna talk more about this because we don't often talk about alcohol abuse and women. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it seems yeah. that it is, there are signs that it's a growing problem. Yeah, I mean, it's so important that Elizabeth is sharing her story. It helps deal with, with the stigma. It's hard to get good numbers, but one thing we know, it's more common in men, but arrests for driving under the influence for men are going down. For women, it's going up. Mm. Even though she said she never, never uh, drove, 
That's when she drank, but heavy drinking actually is more dangerous for women. It is. It's riskier. When you compare women who drink heavily to men who drink heavily, they're more likely to have liver disease, heart disease, brain disease. It increases the risk for, for breast cancer, and it puts them at risk of, of being victims of sexual abuse. Mm -hmm. And she also writes in a book that it took her several, uh, multiple trips to rehab over a period of months before she was able to quit drinking for good. Yeah. But how common is it for people to struggle with relapses? That's the story that you keep hearing. You know, it's a disease, and each time you have to struggle and, and finally admit you have a problem, then you can start to ask for help. And, and you go through that cycle every time. And it's so good that she was honest about that. And it took multiple times for her to do that and for people to know that and to know that it is a disease. Okay, so Rich, you know there are some people that are women, especially watching this morning, and saying, okay, do I have a problem? Are there yeah. questions we can ask ourselves? Yeah, so there's four simple questions. And if you answer yes to these, it doesn't necessarily mean you have a drinking problem. It may miss some people, but it means you should ask for some help. So first one, have you ever felt that you should cut down on your drinking? Second, have, have people annoyed you by criticizing the amount that you're drinking? Have you ever felt bad or guilty about your drinking? And have you ever had a drink first thing in the morning to steady the nerves or to fight a hangover? If you answered yes to any of those questions, it's a good sign that you should ask for some help. All right, Rich, thank you. Those are good questions that we should ask ourselves. And Elizabeth will share much more of her story in a Diane Sawyer special edition of 2020 that is airing tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern right here on ABC.